plays, but it apparently wasn't. Uh, uh, it was it was considered a, a negative, a negative ad. So, so. Was, oh, sorry. Is it worth it to try and I guess like rehab your image in some of these Republican districts, or to sort of present what you've done, or are you guys more focused on just? Between? What people say to me all the time: you raise more money than anybody. Maybe not the Obamas and the Clintons, but I've not run for president. Why don't you spend some of your money on yourself? Go out there and say what you did, this, this, and this. But, you know, it's just not, maybe I should, but the fact is uh, what I want to do is have these members present themselves. Because basically, at the end of the day, that's what people are interested in. Their representative and what their representative is going to do for their district. The Republicans are afraid of that contrast in a race. Because they're going to go there to be involved in trickle-down economics, shutting down hospitals, and the rest of it. So they don't want them to see that contrast, so they focus on something else. And it's a diversionary tactic. It's a self-fulfilling problem. You demonize, and then you... It, we call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear. And then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's, it's a tactic. And it's, it's, it's self-evident. But I think I'm worth the trouble, very frankly. I, I love the fray. I, I'm, not, I know, I'm not disrespectful of people's views. I, I, I respect any positive things that people want to say, or even negative, as, as long as it's constructive. Uh, but when it's blatantly self-serving and uh, beyond the normal competition that the press so enjoys focusing on, instead of, wouldn't it be better if all the press were focusing on the Senate heartless, mean-spirited bill uh, that hurt seniors and veterans, working families in our country, terrible damage to our children. So I, I hope that all the people are concerned about our children, concerned about them uh, uh, in terms of these health care bills. But it is a, an interesting time. It is an opportunity. It's what campaigns are about. I serve at the pleasure of my caucus. My caucus is overwhelmingly supportive of me. And this is not the, you know, the time. Uh, they, at the end of a two-year time, We'll see what happens then. And every year, it is a time. Many times I had not really wanted to run again when they called upon me to do so. This time I did. The election of Donald Trump. I thought, this, this takes the knowledge and experience that I have, says she, immodestly, uh, to, to, to make this fight and to unify our, our members around the facts. Facts. The law progress for the American people. Urgency, responsibility, opportunity. I love it. Thank you. Well, the Senate's health care replacement bill, as uh, Nancy Pelosi discussed, has been released. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell presented the plan on the Senate floor earlier today. Senators now hearing remarks posed to the proposal from Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, although Senator Mitch McConnell has returned to the floor. You can see the Senate live now on our companion network, C-SPAN 2, and you can read the bill itself on our homepage at cspan.org. 